Chapter 14. Some things are true, but not completely true. Carl Renbury has been given his last and final warning from Mr. Pickering, even and there will be no more chances, even though Mr. Washington tried his best. I know this because I overheard Mrs. Mars talking to Mrs. Wilberton. This means that one more slip up and Carl has to leave our school. This makes me sad because even though Carl has decided not to be my friend anymore, I think school will not be the same without him. When I get home, I rush in and turn on the TV. I'm sitting there watching Ruby Redford. It's before dinner and I am quite ravenous, really hungry, and my tummy is making those kinds of those kind of burbling sounds, which if I was hiding in a hedge spying on someone would really give me away, which is why Ruby always carries a special Ruby cookie in her backpack. They are hardly nutritious and fend off hunger. That's what they say on the ads. They sell them at our supermarket. Mom rarely, rarely lets me have them because she, she says they are commercial rubbish and really one is just paying for the packaging. I love the packaging. That's what I like about them. I will buy nearly anything with Ruby Redford on it. In this episode called Hang In There Buddy, Ruby has got herself in a very tight spot trying to rescue Clancy Crew. Count Von Viscount has set the dogs at her and what's worse is her special bike with rocket boosters has got a flat so she has to ditch it and run like mad crazy like a mad crazy thing to get away. And Ruby Redford might be the fastest runner in her school, but can she run faster than a dog? The answer is no, because no one can. I don't think unless it is a sausage dog. Sausage dog. Proper name, Dachshund. Looks like a sausage on legs. Good at smelling things out, but doesn't have a personal scent, like other dogs. Sausage dog equals sausage dog. And it's no use hiding from dogs, because you know what dogs are good smellers and they will find you wherever even if you are running in a stream of water they will sniff you out if you want to outwit a dog carl renbury says you must confuse them with different odors so they don't know what they are chasing anymore easier said than done luckily ruby knows this and has brought some of her really smelly socks which she, put, which she puts on a passing deer who runs off with them which of course the dogs follow thinking it is ruby herself and then she sprays this special deodorizing spray all over herself, which dissolves all of her odor and gives her the smell of a shrub so she can simply blend in. You can see what I mean about amazing ideas. It just wouldn't occur to me to do that. Then she says, sniff that, suckers. I love watching Ruby Redford because it just sort of carries me away. I almost feel like I am her. And I find myself saying things like, oh, brother, and this is a total yawn. She has an amazing way of talking. I'm trying to perfect it myself. And the other day when I got home from being at Betty's, I walked in and my dad was reading the paper in his glasses. And my mom was doing some knitting and Manal was making something out of toilet paper, paper rolls. And I said, what's this, Geek Central? And dad looked up from his reading and dipped his eyebrow and said, glad you could make it, kid. And I said, I didn't know you knew, knew Hitch's catchphrase. And he said, well, kid, you learn something new every day, which is exactly what Hitch would say. And I said, you got that right, which is exactly what Clancy Crew would say. And mom said, you better believe it, Buster, which is exactly what Ruby Redford would say. And Manal said, what are you talking about? Which is exactly what I would expect from my maggot brother. Anyway, I am sitting watching Ruby Redford, but in the ad breaks, I'm keeping half an ear out for intriguing information. Sometimes you can pick up top secret things when you are watching TV since nobody thinks you are listening. I hear Granddad talking to Cement, our dog. He says, how would you like a nice bit of steak? Oh, I bet you would like that, wouldn't you? Yes, you would. I'll just cut a little bit off each one and no one will know. I won't, no one will ever know. I won't tell if you won't. Then I hear a gulping sound of a largest dog and a shuffling sound of someone who wears slippers. I go back to watching the ads. They have one for Ruby Spaghetti. It's bits of spaghetti all made into words that Ruby Redford would say. Things like creep and yeeks and bozo. You see, sometimes Ruby's butler Hitch will write top secret information in the spaghetti. Her parents are completely oblivious about, unaware of paying no attention to, Ruby's secret agent life. At dinner, Mom says, I haven't seen Carl around much lately. How's he getting on these days? I say, he's been in more trouble and Mr. Pickering says he will have to think about asking Carl to leave the school and go to another one because he has done all he can and if Carl wants to carry on with this sort of behavior without explaining himself, then he really has no choice but to write his mother and ask her to find an alternative school for him. And he would regret to do this. 
but he must think long and hard about the other pupils and what's best for them, and it's a shame, it really is. That's what I heard Mrs. Mars sing to Mrs. Mrs. Wilburton that Mr. Pickering had said to Carl anyway. Mom says, wow, you certainly do pay attention when you want to. I say, well, that's because this is the kind of information that interests me. Mom says, and what do you think should happen? And I say, well, it's difficult for Mr. Pickering because Carl won't talk to anyone and so no one knows his problems. Mom says, what are his problems? And I say, Carl doesn't want me to say. And Mom says, I see the problem. When Mom serves up the steak, she says, that's funny. They seem much smaller than when I bought them. I notice Granddad is looking all aged and not like a person who fed our dinner to the dog. I don't tell on him because I don't like people who tell on people and he would be in serious trouble. And I like Grandad, even if my steak did end up the size of a peanut. It's a Ruby Redford rule that someone's bad luck could be your good luck. And I think she might just be right. This morning I got to school and I did some overhearing, which I wished I could have jotted down in my Ruby notebook. What I heard was Susie Wu saying to Bridget Garnet that she had overheard Cindy Fisher saying that apparently Grace Grappolo's mother phoned her mother this morning to say not to bother coming by to pick up Grace because they had the ambulance people over last night because Grace was practicing her moves for the sound of music and she slipped and broke an ankle and now she is on crutches. Of course, this, get, this gets me thinking because there is not long till the school play performance and will her ankle be mended in time? And if not, who will play the part of Liesel? And guess who knows the whole part by heart? On the way to class, I pass Carl Renberry, but he doesn't look at me, and all day he is quiet. And later in class, I'm waiting for Mrs. Wilburton to say the news, but she doesn't, so in the end, I'm forced to ask because I absolutely have to know. I say, Mrs. Wilburton, now that Grace Grappolo has got a broken ankle and has to have crutches, who do you think will, play the, will be the part of Liesel? <clears throat> Mrs. Wilburton says, hmm, well, that just depends on who knows the part, doesn't it? Then I say, Mrs. Wilburton, I know the part, because you see I do, because I have been learning it like mad, because Mr. Washington said if you learn things by heart, it's a good way of exercising your memory. And then Mrs. Wilburton goes all shuffly, and she says, well, we are not going to discuss it now, since nobody knows whether Grace will be able to perform or not. And Betty says, but Mrs. Wilburton, it takes at least six to eight weeks to mend a broken ankle, and so there won't be time for Grace to mend hers before the play, and she will definitely be needing both her ankles for the part of Liesel. It's not just a part you can do with just the one. Skipping is involved. And Mrs. Wilburton says, I will be the judge of whose ankles are or aren't right for the part. Thank you very much. Later on at home, I am in the middle of discovering that there is no K and anxious when the doorbell rings and Granddad answers it. It's Carl Renberry. He's come to collect Granddad and cement for dog training. I hear Granddad say, Oh, Clarice is at home. Shall we get her to come too? And Carl says, It's better not to have too many people. It can be very distracting for the dog if there's too much going on. And this might be a bit true, but it's not completely true.